he was given the highest honor that any civilian other than a, a head of state received. Greetings, all very individuals. Welcome to another Africa podcast. This is episode 37, and we're going to talk about Africa is great. Specifically, we're going to talk about the king of pop, Michael Jackson. Now, who's Michael Jackson? Now, it would be very strange for me to tell you who Michael Jackson is because everybody in the grandma knows who Michael Jackson is. But if you want to know a little bit more, he loved Africa. He felt and saw himself as an African. And he believed that music, art, and whole civilization started in the great continent of Africa. He did many humanitarian works in Africa with many children and was crowned king of the Ivory Coast village called Queen Jabo. When Michael visited Africa, Ivory Coast, in 1992, he was crowned the king of pop, Michael Jackson, Amalaman, Anno. And he was given a crown in the village of Queen Jabo. And the Ani people who lived there in the kingdom of Sanwi, which was around since the mid 18th century, crowned him king of the people. And it was a very important ceremony. But when asked how he felt about the whole situation, Michael said that he was very honored and that he tried not to think about it so it doesn't get to his head. But what I really like about Mike is not many people like to associate him with Africa because of maybe his many antics, but he is an African. His history goes all the way back to the in Native America and his great great grandfather Jack Gale started a rescue relationship with an African slave and then they had a son whose nickname was Jack Son which then later changed to Jackson his last name and then his grandfather and his father carried on the name Jackson and that's why we get Michael Jackson today. Although not many people do know that side of Michael but it's an integral part of his identity. So Africa is really ingrained in Michael Jackson's blood and he is an African in my eyes and in many African Americans and Africans around the world's eyes. In fact he loved Africa so much that he saw music to be the center point of Africa. And the rhythms of, of Africa, which are the roots of rhythm, that's my favorite music. Cause I think that's the favorite music of the world, because all music is derived from that. I mean, Africa is music. It is the origin. You know, it, it, it is the dawn of existence. And so you can't avoid that. So that's in everything that, that's been influenced, you know, by myself. He took many of his inspirations from Africa, especially for his great albums, like Off the Wall, thriller and bad Liberian girl in the album bad definitely took inspiration from the African rhythm especially in the intro of that song of course Michael took many African elements and added it to his music and that is why many people were drawn to his music in fact he would also say that many of the African Americans singers who made that name for themselves definitely took the inspiration from Africa, especially the dances like swing and every single dance that really came out and was popularized in America definitely came from African influences. And Michael Jackson knew that and he was proud of his skin. He had a skin disease and he also said he didn't do any bleaching and that's why he had to patch up his skin. So. I believe him, especially all the wrong accusations which were not proven about his deeds and I believe that he didn't do any of that. As remember Mike was the greatest, he beat Elvis, he beat the Beatles, he owned half of Sony, he was pretty much a king, a living king and he was African as well and many people didn't like that especially during MTV in the 80s Mike was the first person to get his music video African American person to have his music video on MTV in the 80s so Mike was really somebody he he was somebody who was a figurehead for Africans around the world and many of us growing up looked up to him 
as this really interesting figure, as you should. Jesse, in my heart, in my deepest of heart, I really love Africa, and I love the people of Africa, and that's why whenever I get the chance, my children and I, we jump on the plane and we fly to Africa and we vacation there. I spent more of my vacations in Africa than any other country. And um, we love the people and we love the environment. Topographically, it's one of the most beautiful places on the surface of the earth. They never show the sandy white sugar beaches, and it's there. They never show the beautiful, you know, the landscaping. They never show the buildings, the metropolis of Durban, you know, Johannesburg, Cape Town, Kenya, you know, uh, the Ivory Coast. You know, Rwanda, they never show how beautiful the place is. And it's really stunningly beautiful. Yeah. And I want to enhance that awareness with what I'm doing. And that's been my dream for many, many years. And everybody around me know that because I go there very much. He did many humanitarian works for Africa. In fact, he's in the Guinness Book of Records for all his humanitarian works and the amount of money that he's given to different places and different charities just for them to keep running and to help the world. His main goal was to try and make the world a better place. I knew he was a man for genuine heart and definitely somebody that a lot of us can look up to. In fact, in this photo here, he was actually seen with Bob Marley, which is quite interesting during 1975 as he was back up for Bob Marley. But Mike is a special, a spectacular person and he's definitely a great example of an Afro Scot as he took his talents, gifts and many different cultures and he understood them, making him a spectacular Afro Scot.